needs to happen for the Niners to make a Super Bowl run. Well, if you're a team trying to play them, you're always trying to figure out how do I slow down an offense that seems to morph and change from week to week and attack defense's weaknesses. And then on the other side, how are you going to block those pass rushers? How are you going to block those guys who get after the quarterback on every snap? Good luck. This is a loaded 49ers team. Meanwhile, for the visiting Bengals, it's a team that's been to the Super Bowl three times in their history, has never won it, but there's just a sense that this could be the year, and you don't disagree. I certainly do not, because go back two seasons ago, many thought it was a fluke that they got to the Super Bowl. Well, they came back the next year, and they got to the AFC Championship game, and were extremely disappointed they didn't get back to the Super Bowl. The pieces are in place, the confidence is high. They were Super Bowl opponents twice in the 80s, and they're back at it here. The Bengals and Niners are underway. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads them out in season number two from Iowa State. There weren't many bigger stories last season than Purdy, who's officially the most famous Mr. Irrelevant of all time. Won each of his first five starts and almost guided his team to a Super Bowl. He's really forced the team to reevaluate his plans at quarterback because he looks like the real deal. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play at second down. Brandon, you're a big lover of music. How about what you just saw there? This is what I call playing the piano for a defensive lineman, the ability to move laterally up and down the line of scrimmage. How about the way he just flowed and got to the outside part of the field and made that play? Another run with McCaffrey on second down. A oh, nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. And he's going to have the Niners first down as he's got this up to about the 34-yard line. For him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. There's Purdy on first and ten. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Here's second and ten. Back to throw, Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he gets this with the midfield before he's brought down. It'll go as a first down for San Francisco on a pickup of 16. The first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name. But I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him in the middle of the field. Now your wide receivers are getting involved as this game goes on. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. Play action. Now Purdy. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 27-yard line. A gain there of 21 yards. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. McCaffrey running up the middle. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? Purdy. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A lot of precision being shown on this opening drive. They've been methodical. They've 
They've been crisp, and as a reward, they're going to be set up with an early first and goal. A terrific opening drive has them knocking on the door, first and goal. The throwing here, Purdy. Touchdown! Jerome Jennings from four yards out. And the 49ers are on the board first here this afternoon. They got to love that. Nine play drive results in six points. That means they're doing the dictating. That means that they've described how the game's going to go. They're playing at their tempo, at their pace. If you're on the other side of the ball, if you're playing defense, defense is not methodical. They've got to go in there and shake things up and create a little havoc. Moody good with the extra point. And it's now a 7-0 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And the Bengals now set for their first possession, and it's pro bowler Joe Burrow who leads this offense in his fourth season now out of LSU. Burrow may be young in his career, but he's helping the Bengals to one of the best stretches they've ever seen. 12 wins last year with matching team record, and they made the conference championship game in back-to-back -back seasons for the first time ever. At the center of it all is the man they call Joey B. 35 touchdown passes last year and almost 4,500 yards. That's on the guard, Alex Kappa. Now they go play action now. Burrow. Man open. That's Jamar Chase complete. It's a big play yet amazingly because of how far they had to go. They're still looking at a second down here. I don't care who you put on him. He's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now you're right. They're in man-to-man. -man. Maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Charles already trailing by touchdown early. In this offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot. And they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On second down, Burrow. And he will find his man Chase complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Third catch for him on this drive alone, and it'll give him a first down. Well, that's not just his first, not his second, already his third completion here on the opening drive. And I, I think it's safe to say that getting him the ball in this game, one of their top priorities. And a top priority for the defense has got to be finding ways to cover him, and I don't think you can have one basic coverage to get it done. You have to throw a number of coverages at him, make him think as he's running downfield, and hope you can create a little bit of habit. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. 
Start of the second quarter, and it's the Bengals in control of the football. Second and nine. As they've got it as we resume action. Now Burrow to throw on second down. Open man is Chase complete. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 33. The LSU connection. Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Short throw to Smith. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And Higgins is going to have a Bengals first down as he'll be brought down just outside the red zone. Mark him at the 21. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That's complete to the tight end sample. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So five yards here, five on the play, and it'll be second down. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. Meanwhile, Burrow's throw into the hands of Boyd. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as the tackle made at the 10-yard line. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. Here's Burrow. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Herb Smith Jr. from 10 yards out. And the Bengals are an extra point away from evening this one up. That's almost just not right. You cover everybody, but those tight ends, they can be awfully reliable. Very reliable. It, the defense just has to hate those guys. This drives them crazy because oftentimes you can't match up with them. They have either with size, speed, or maybe even just strength. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. That one in the books as a 12-play drive, and it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now. But this offense... They just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. From the 29, here's second and three. And they'll try to run the option here. Across the 30 to the 31-yard line. They'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. 
Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. That good for 19 and a first down. Brent, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And this is caught, Jennings. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. He scored their touchdown earlier, and this had a chance to be another. This secondary scrambled for answers, looking at each other, trying to figure out who is going to put the clamps on this guy, because right now, he's absolutely shredding them. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That's caught by Jennings. And he'll be taken down after a gain of about eight as that will lead us to the two-minute warning. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. Second and two, first down marker at the eight. Here's Purdy. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, this has been a pretty sizable drive. They've had some success. Finally, the defensive coordinator found some success of his own. I think he just simply said enough of that. Okay, they've moved the ball well. We need to force the issue from our end, and that's exactly what he did. Purdy with it on third and long. the response and that O-line feels a lot better now don't they? Yeah without a doubt because give up the sack in the previous play that just hurts those guys because they never want to see their guy get hit. Moody good with the extra point and that makes the score 14 to 7. So that drives seven plays in length and it's finished off by a receiving touchdown from Christian McCaffrey. Moody back out there now to send this one away. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Cincinnati coming back onto the field here for their second drive. The Charles will see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive, and they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, back door them, and that time worked well for a solid game. This is caught. It's Boyd. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half.
On first and ten, Joe Burrow. And that's caught one more time by Blue. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. The ball on the 32, it's second and two. Now it's Burrow. This goes out wide for Mixon. And they will have a first down as they are definitely in field goal range now down at the 20-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. From the red zone now, here's Burrow first down. And that went to the right side and incomplete. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. McPherson's kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. Well, a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner, because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. The Niners got a solid first half outing by their second year quarterback, Brock Purdy. He fired his guys into the lead with two first half touchdown passes as they were looking like a well-oiled machine in the first half of play. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. The Bengals with work to do in this third quarter, but they'll get the football first as we are back underway. This taken in at the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Bengal offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. But Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. From the 25, here's second and six. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. Connecting on the out route here with Higgins. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. And it's pretty evident that this passing game has been frustrated so far. They haven't really moved the ball the way we might have expected, but this is a good pickup here for the first down.
throwing now. Burrow on first down. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free when it's second down. Looked like both sides were anticipating a quick throw there. And the defense was ready to jump in and deny it. And they did. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Over the middle, that's caught by Chase. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers, 43. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. Throwing again, it's Burrow. And that is incomplete. Now oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Burrow will throw. Complete. Smith has it. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still third down. Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards. So now they need seven yards on third down. To the air again, Burrow. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it, it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now it'll be fourth and short. They'll try and run with Nixon. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. They only got a couple, but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth. At first glance, I actually wasn't sure that he got it, but he ended up getting it by about a full yard. He certainly did, but it took a little effort, didn't it? Took some nice push, a little crease inside, and some determined running to make sure that he got the first down. Back to Mixon on first down. And he's going to take this one down to the 25. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Here's second and three. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. Throwing for Chase on the crosser. He's got it. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far in this drive, so good. They've moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and ten from the ten. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. A little joke. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. Second down and a yard. Again, it's Mixon. And he is in. Touchdown. Bengals. Joe Mixon taking it in from a yard out. And the Bengals have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. 
Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. And McPherson on for the extra point. It's good, and they'll take a 17-14 lead. So that drive, 12 plays in length, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Ray Ray McLeod to return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense... They've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. A good action to this point in the third quarter. Just a three-point game. Second and ten. Now Samuel. And he'll be taken down here at about the 23-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going into the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That is first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. All right, let's just go and walk through this one pretty easily, right? Blast off the line of scrimmage, get downfield to a certain point, usually around 8 to 10 yards, turn around and make sure the quarterback sees your numbers and set yourself up for the pass. A well-executed curl route by Charles Davis. Now a give, right side, McCaffrey. And he'll be corralled out across midfield, down to the 45. Three quarters have come and gone. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here in Santa Clara. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Play action, and now here's Purdy to throw it. And he will find his man, Samuel. Touchdown, 49ers! Debo Samuel, 35 yards. And the 49ers answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. Plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown on the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here, and they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. An extra point try now for Moody. It's up and good to make it 21-17. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's Debo Samuel who caps things with a touchdown reception. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. 
We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. And here's a throw taken in by Boyd. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? Not like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. Burrow to Boyd there for the Cincy first. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, and it's going to lead to third down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield, go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. Burrow on play action. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. An excellent gain, 35 yards. Well, this is where an offense needs to show what it's made of, and in fact, where a quarterback needs to show what he's made of, trying to engineer a fourth-quarter comeback, and he hits a big one right there. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Burrow looking to pass. And this one complete to Smith. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. And Burrow going to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. That sure looked like a nice call on the defense and they're very cohesive in their coverage. As soon as he cut inside, they broke on the football and met him as the ball got there and forced the incompletion. On third down, Nixon. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. One score down, here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll try and throw for it with Burrow. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And the Bengals are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And with the scoreboard against them here in the fourth quarter, this was definitely four down territory. Really nice job there finding a way to get open and a really nice throw. That sets them up with first and goal. Here's first and goal. Now Burrow. Smith Jr. 
A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Bengals have taken a fourth quarter lead. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. A perfect plan on how to utilize him best when they get in close. Now an important extra point here to stretch this lead to a field goal. He's got it, and this is indeed up to a three-point lead. A pretty long drive that time, 11 plays all told, and it ends with a Bengals score. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So Purdy and the Niners down 24-21. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go. Plenty of time here. They've got three timeouts and the two-minute warning as they've got it first and 10. Gets this to his running back. It's Christian McCaffrey. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So it's 49er football here as we get your reset. They come up on a second down now in a game that looks like it's going to go down the wire. Purdy throw pulled in by Kittle. And Kittle going to have a 49ers first down as the tackle made right at the 30-yard line. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and 10 now. Here's Purdy to throw. The same target, same result. It's Kittle. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Very sharp here to start this drive, three for three. Yeah, I like the way he's running this two-minute drill. Very sharp, very precise in throwing the football. Here's second and a yard. To throw is Purdy. That is a nice move. Okay, the three timeouts left. Here's first down. Here's Purdy. This pass to Jennings and he makes the catch. The 49ers now are going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 seconds to go in half number two. Two timeouts still at their disposal. Here's a first and ten now. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Here's second down. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. Muscle damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've run the belt three times with passing touchdowns. But guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Well, this offense still has the one timeout here, remember. First and ten. And now the timeout call. So five seconds left. 
And a field goal would send us to overtime. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to potentially send us to overtime. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. So overtime on the horizon, barring a wild finish here as the kick's away. So four quarters wasn't enough, and we are off to overtime. Don't change that dime. So it's the 49ers who will get the football first with a chance to win it here in overtime. McLeod now on the return, taking it about the one. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And they'll come up second and seven. First throw of overtime for Purdy. Gets this one to use check. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I think they tried to fool him on that one. You know, being able to throw the ball to the fullback position, no one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage. You think they should yank that one from the playbook, at least uh, for the time being? <laughs> I, think, I think what you do is you take it out and you evaluate it next week in practice. Throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. The temptation to go for it probably there always is, especially in overtime. Got to punt it, though. I think you're right. I think that you absolutely have to punt it away and trust your defense, especially play a little field position here. But you're so right about the temptation. Another way to satisfy that, though, line up in punt formation and fake it. That's another way to get it done. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Now this Bengals offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Well, their defense did the job, got off the field without giving up any points. And now, Charles, all they need here is a field goal, and they get the victory. Yeah, and this is the way I love overtime. I'm one of those really, really old-school guys that like sudden death right from the beginning. Well, we've got it now because any points wins the game. On defense, get a safety, a pick six, fumble return. You can win it as well. So I'm really looking forward to this series and see how both sides play it. 
Now second and five. On the option left, it's Burrow. And they're able to get this one across the 35. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. Well, I tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. Looking for Chase on the out route. He's got him. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he'll get this up to midfield. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call, but when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to him. That tells me you're mature as a play caller, and it's working for them in overtime. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. 50 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. They went counter there offensively, and a couple of defenders were on skates for a second. They certainly were, and you know what offensive linemen love about the counters and the misdirections? Sometimes you don't even have to block the defender. He can run himself out of the play if he doesn't read his keys properly. Mixon with a first down carry. Taken down at the 30. They've had some success here in overtime on this opening drive running the football right back to that well. And why not? When you have that kind of success, make them stop you. And until they do, keep going back to that well you just spoke about. I think there's more water there and available to them. Here's second and seven. And they go play action now. Burrow. He will find his man Chase complete. And all the way to the two-yard line there before crossing over out of bounds. And that's a nice job of working his way open down in the red zone. Looked that one in and then made a beeline for the pylon. He didn't quite get there, and you want to give him a little extra for the effort. But instead, he sets his guys up in excellent shape for the first and goal. They'll run here with Hubbard. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. So it's the Bengals who come away with a win. And the man leading the way was their quarterback, CD. That's Joe Burrow. Yeah, I thought this defense just didn't have an answer for him all game long. They tried to change things up, but he was always one step ahead. And he finished with over 300 yards passing and two touchdown passes as well. So that'll just